Hey, fellow Alaskans, how are we all doing today? We are currently in Anchorage, Alaska, in front of the Nesbitt Courthouse for the Alaska Grand Jury Investigation. The trial is to begin today to oral arguments, and please stay tuned, like, share, click that bell to be notified every time you go live. Uh, we are here, a big crowd out in front protesting, making sure that the public is well aware of what is going on and keeping people informed about what is happening within our state. Thank you guys all for being here again today. We really do appreciate it. If you're just joining us, take a moment, like and share this video, it's greatly appreciated. We're here for the continuation of the trial for against Judge Margaret Murphy for deep-seated corruption within our judicial branch within the state of Alaska. This goes to all levels of our judicial branch, from the bottom all the way up to the very tippy top to the Supreme Court. We need to take action. Alaskans need to be aware. The more we participate, we need to make sure that we keep this directly in front of the public's eye. Oh. As you can see, the news crews have shown up out here today. They couldn't be bothered to show up in Homer where it was happening the last few times. They moved it to Anchorage due to security reasons is the main reason I've been told. Well, appreciate it. If you need anything else, whatever, I can tell my number. So. Couldn't keep things very safe there in Anchorage. Uh, in uh, Homer, they had to, at one point when this first started, fly out a special guard and a... Metal detector, they're out at the courthouse there in Homer, and uh, it was quite hilarious. It was one of the first hearings. The next one they had after that, they didn't have nobody show up other than us. And again, we appreciate you guys all being here today. Take time, like, and share. The trial begins at 10 p.m. Uh, and uh, Judge Murphy is going to be presenting in front of Judge Matthews, who's presiding over the case. Uh, this has been an ongoing case now for decades, and uh, we need to continue to keep this in the public's eye. Our judicial branch, as I stated before, is one of the most corrupt within the United States. Alaska has the second most corrupt uh, government in the United States, second only to those in Washington, D.C., and our judicial branch is a part of the same far-left liberal uh, using warfare, weaponized our uh, courts for their own benefit you know and but then the questions start cropping up if the rules said that they usually they have panel 18 grand jurors but then due to covid they knocked it down to 14 for the court rule but then in the pleadings it came out that they never impaneled 14 they impaneled 12 which is the constitutional minimum well what happened why would the court system for a two-year investigation and panel the bare minimum. That'd be like you and I flying to Hawaii and putting on the exact amount of fuel with no wind to get to Hawaii and hoping no wind crops up. Would that be... Yeah. Go. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Is that... Dangerous. Yeah. It wouldn't be smart. No, exactly. You know, and so... And it still uh, infringes upon the right of the people to have external balances and checks in the judicial system which has an obligation to give impartial and fair hearings. And that's Hello. not happening. If it was happening... Well, good Bert. morning, Nate. How are you this good morning? morning? Well, I'm doing this good, actually. Good to see you again. Uh, I'm glad to actually get here. Uh, the weather definitely made things interesting this morning getting out on the road. Yep. And uh, you want to speak to the audience? It's exciting, actual oral, oral arguments today. Yep. Well, we're making headway, and uh, so yeah, we're here to just uh, see what's going to happen there. And one of the main things that I'm interested in is in the pleadings before the oral arguments. It came out that eight months ago, the grand jury issued a report and recommendation about what they found in their investigation into judicial corruption, but. The report's never been released. Eight, you know, and it was released eight months ago. And so, 
our Constitution says that the power of grand juries to investigate and make recommendations shall never be suspended. Well, a judge has now been holding that recommendation for eight months. I think that that qualifies as being suspended. It does, it does. Uh, do, are you expecting any sort of action based upon today on that regards? or um, We're just, uh, we just learned that there was a grand jury report um, because of the pleadings. And so we're just going to start making it know, known that we know there's a grand jury report out there and that the public has a, a constitutional right to see it. And uh, do, you, do you expect them to actually release it, or do you still continue to think they're going to stonewall this and keep us from being able to get access to the information that is rightfully ours? I don't know, but we're going to just, you know, there's people here that uh, um, believe that we should have it in the, the first, uh, the first uh, thing we need to do is expressed to the court and the judges that we know there's a grand jury report and we have a right to it. So I don't know exactly when we're going to get it, but we'll just keep uh, having demonstrations or protests until we get it. Well, we've all heard the rumors of why this got moved back out of Homer. Um, one of the biggest ones out being out there is, is nobody in the, that's involved with this case actually really lives out there except for maybe Murphy herself. Um, do you know why this was moved here? I understand, from my understanding, it was security reasons that they're afraid something might happen in Homer and uh, they wanted to move it to a more secure courthouse. What's your opinion on this? I don't, I don't know. All I know is that Judge Murphy's legal team said what you said that they, they said that there were, they had concerns of security because there's so many people following this case now. They also said that it was expensive to go to Homer, but they're the ones that requested the venue to be in Homer. So you got to wonder if you know how legitimate that is if. They request the venue to be in Homer and then are complaining it's in Homer. You know, so I, a lot of people think they were just moving it around to try to keep the public from being able to schedule to attend and to watch what's going on. Well, I know myself as one and thankful that it got moved to Anchorage. Uh, that trip to Homer from Big Lake's a mighty long one. And uh, versus you, on the other hand, you're coming from Soldatna Homer area, having to travel now into Anchorage. Uh, I'm, I'm really impressed with the big turnout that we have here today in support of this happening. And uh, are you expecting anything to come out during the oral arguments today? Uh, any predictions, that is? I, I don't know. Um, all I know is that it would be any information is good. And so we're hoping for uh, you know, more information like what's going on with the grand jury report, whatnot. Um, as I said, there were some questions about why they only impaneled 12 grand jurors when the rules said they had to impanel 14. And now they're claiming there weren't enough grand jurors. Well, if the court system is responsible for impaneling grand jurors, and now they're saying there weren't enough grand jurors, why did the court system not impanel more grand jurors. You can impanel up to 18 grand jurors. And so, and they didn't impanel any alternates. Every other grand jury apparently that's been impaneled in this state has had 14 to 18 with six or eight alternates. And so why was this grand jury uh, basically set up to fail from the beginning? So you bring up the uh, rule changes, uh, and uh, not specifically the one I was looking for, but the rule 1492, I think it is, or the the one that they changed the rules where they took all the, the teeth from the judicial oh, branch. Yeah, they, the Supreme Court, in the middle of this grand jury investigation, changed the court rules to strip the rights of the grand jury to investigate what they want to, strip the rights away for the grand jury to indict, and issue reports and to do that the Supreme Court bypassed their own rules committee there's a 13 member rules committee that are supposed to write the rules and investigate and make recommendations then to the Supreme Court the Supreme Court basically aced them out of the picture this rules committee found out that they had been bypassed and and 
protested saying that this these rule changes were an important change of a constitutional nature and asked for a hearing for a meeting for them to be involved and the supreme court still didn't hold a hearing went ahead and passed the the rule change and so it looks like they made an unconstitutional or bypassed their own procedures to make an unconstitutional rule change to hamstring this grand jury and that was before they issued the indictment and before the grand jury issued a report so before the grand jury could do anything the supreme court basically tried to cut up you know unconstitutionally stop them so uh, is anything else parting words here that you'd like to say I know it's getting close, so we're going to have to, to, to get in there and, and go uh, make sure that we are actively participating so that everybody inside the courtroom knows that Alaskans are paying attention to this case. What makes this case so important, and why should all Alaskans be paying attention to it? Well, it concerns corruption in our government and cover-up, and if we don't kind of expose it, it's going to do nothing but get worse. And so... Um, everybody needs to be aware. It's a constitutional protection that was specifically written into our Constitution to protect the people from the government. And the issue that the grand juries were investigating is whether judges were corrupt and more importantly whether the judge investigator, the only one in our state for the last 25 years, has been falsifying investigations to cover up for judges. And so if that judge investigator is allowing corrupt judges to remain on the bench, look at the damage that might be occurring across the entire state. It could be thousands or tens of thousands of cases are, are corrupt because the judges are corrupt and not being removed. So anyway, that's... Uh, well, I, I do got one more for you here that, that I really kind of want to ask. I, I happened to pop online last night and I catch a video that pops up on my feed from you back in 2017 talking about you're sitting on the floor I think you're probably in your living room and you had just got tased within the courtroom um, what if anything does that have to do with this particular case and uh, is there kind of like a history going on here that maybe we all should be aware of um. I had uh, evidence that was being excluded from a court case and I figured out I had a constitutional right to uh, present it and the court decided I did not. And so, um, you know, I guess that's where I stand on that is if your constitutional rights are being violated you need to have enough gumption to stand up and do something about it and so you know you seen what happened when i first started standing up but did it deter me no here we are and and part of what the grand jury's investigating is about what all happened to you know you know what happened leading up to all that so and the importance of the grand jury, why is it so important that these, uh, the grand juries continue their investigations? Well, if they don't, government will get away with anything they want. Government will not investigate itself. And so our grand juries were written into law or into the Constitution to be a, the citizen's way to investigate government when government will not investigate itself. That's it in a nutshell. And if we lose that, government will just keep twisting the rules like we've been seeing them do it until pretty soon they can do anything they want and they'll never get in trouble. Well, thank you, David. I really do appreciate your time here this morning. It is great again to see such a, a large crowd here out and for this uh, trial today. Oh. And again, this is State of Alaska versus uh, ex-judge Margaret Murphy and uh, the deep-seated corruption uh, that was within, within our judicial branch here within our state. Thank you. Okay, thank you. How you doing, man? All righty, guys. You guys all heard it here live. Thank you for being here. Again, like, share, find this on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Rumble, 
uh, all of your favorite channels, even on our website when we're live. We'll also be live again when this is over with at the end of the trial. We're not allowed to stream live from inside of the courtroom, uh, but I am allowed to take pictures is all the release that I have been given. If they have changed the rules, then I will see about getting a new release so that I can live stream directly from inside of there, but I don't think that's going to happen today. Uh, thank you guys again for all being here. This is a huge support showed up for this trial today. This is the beginning of the opening arguments, oral arguments for the state of Alaska versus Judge Margaret Murphy. And uh, we've got uh, Judge Matthews presiding over this case. It was moved out of Homer uh, due to logistics and from those of us that are in the know, they claim security reasons that the Homer uh, courthouse just isn't as secure as it is here in Anchorage. But logistics is the main thing. Uh, lawyers and everybody else and all the folks that have been going to this, travel is a big issue. I know myself, I was making every single court case there that they were having in Kenai and Homer and the first one here at this courthouse. And uh, it's a lot of travel involved. I wasn't looking forward to going to Homer today. I was glad it got changed here to this courthouse. Enjoy the snow that we have going on out here, Alaska. Thanks once again for being here. And uh, I'm going to flip this around real quick one more time, give you guys a parting shot of the crowd that's here, and then see about going back and in, going inside and getting into the courtroom. Sorry about that. Okay. Well, I don't know if people are going to stay out here or everybody's going to the courtroom or what. I'm going to wear a Okay. Well, <laughs> All right, they're all breaking up. Thanks again for being here today. Really do appreciate it. Again, like and share. We will be back with part two after this is over with uh, for the oral arguments that are about ready to happen. Again, you can find this on YouTube, Twitter, Rumble, Facebook, and anywhere else that you may like on your favorite channel and our website. If you're on our website, please go there. Click that support button. Your proceeds help make sure we can get here. Later on this evening, I will be doing the town hall, the Matsu Town Hall at the Senior Center, as long as uh, it seems I may be having a problem being able to get into that one, but I'll see what happens. I plan on live streaming that for all of you tonight. And I would like to thank one of our sponsors out there at uh, Tracy's uh, Treasures. You can find them in the Matsu uh, Valley in Wasilla, and uh, they have the uh, greatest and neatest things you can ever find there. They were all decked out for Christmas. You can see the Alaska or the uh, United States flag there. It was something that they had donated to us and it is greatly appreciated. We appreciate them being one of our sponsors. You guys all have yourself a great day and we will see you here in a little while.